Sustainability is a word that's been used a lot recently with many definitions behind. To me, sustainability is to be conscious about current and future challenges we have to address, not only in terms of environmental uh, challenges, but economical and social. If you look at many of the current ways that we think about the city and how we behave in the city and, and how we act in the city, that a lot of that can't be sustained into the future. Sustainability, um, I guess, living more considerately. I think it really is about how humans fit into an existing paradigm, which pre-existed us on Earth, and how we continue to grow and develop and be who we are. If we think about climate change and sustainability, a lot of what we do now can't be sustained into the future. We can't continue to create as many greenhouse gas emissions as we are, and we need to radically change the way we're living in cities. Designing today for our climate is good. Designing for tomorrow's climate is even better. Now, what is tomorrow's climate? Well, we've got models. It's all about how much proactive we are on climate change mitigation and what, which climate we will have in the near future. A friend of mine was involved in a project recently where they heard elephants across southern Africa by lining their paths with um, plants that bees like because elephants don't like bees and wherever the elephants move people kill them because they take out crops etc and they've managed to design this thing it's just a shrub that attracts bees that basically contains the line of the movement of elephants that's landscape biosource materials are the ones that we know for sure can be renewed so if you estimate the life uh, of a building of 60 years, a radiata pine uh, forest will grow and renew itself in 40, 50 years. So you basically have replaced the materials that you used for a building in a lifetime of a building. And if you implement DFD, designed for deconstruction, you will be able even to reuse this wood. Singapore is a very different example, but it's quite interesting because they're slowly introducing recycled water into their drinking water supply. It's not 100%, it's a small percentage of their total volume. And they've had a really strong community consultation, um, I guess, campaign that's lasted over a number of years. They've got what's called a, like an interactive visitor centre where you can go and learn all about how the water's recycled. And you can also have a, a bottle of the recycled water to take home with you. So I think they're an example of a really effective communication and ongoing community campaign. Melbourne has seen very, I don't want to say erratic, but very sudden shifts in demographics and in population growth um, over the, the last 10, 15 years. How do you, how do you retrofit a city in, in that time? You know, who's paying for that? We are creating too much carbon dioxide during this process and we don't have the space and the money to manage all this waste. The new approach that we are pushing in research is circular economy, where we break this linear um, process. It's expensive to implement the infrastructure that we need to have implemented. So I understand the resistance from developers, but at the same time, developers are the builders of cities. Like it's. It's a terrible truth, but it, it just is that way. And I think when they start to understand that they have a social responsibility to start making these changes, it's everything will change. Without the regulation, it was often difficult to enter that conversation with clients about the need to be more efficient with the building construction or to adapt to a high level of climate change because usually there might be a short-term associated cost with that. Often we're thinking about short-term costs rather than the long-term. Each time we try to implement sustainability um, at, toward the end of the design phase, we just end up with uh, a less bad building, but never achieving sustainability. So we're going to end up with like good LED lights and that's it. Density is definitely needed considering the, the population growth, but there is a way to do it. Uh, there is a way to do it well, 
where we uh, keep some green space, where we increase the quality and flexibility of the space. My vision of Melbourne in 2050 uh, will be medium rise, high quality, flexible space, plenty of greenery, uh, plenty of soft transport, get this fluidity happening through the city. I think there are a lot of really smart people living in this city, academics and professionals, um, who do want to see change. There are a lot of obstacles and barriers, but I really do. And I think those exist everywhere in some other shape or form. But I think Melbourne has as good a chance as any other place to, to be a leader. Some big players have a clear sustainability agenda, but they are still competing within a market that looks at the bottom line and dollars is taking over carbon emissions and water savings. And that's where the, the, the shift must happen of not just looking at capital cost, having a holistic approach of a building and the design of the building. And that's where circular economy is the best chance to join forces of sustainability and economic growth. We need to become more active in campaigning our governments and institutions to change. And I think that's slowly happening, but the pace of change isn't quick enough for the scale of the problem. We need a rapid decarbonisation of our economy. We need rapid reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and we need that to happen extremely soon. My experience from other countries is that when you've got a wheel higher up as a government uh, that is changing the rules, the construction industry just follow and they don't have choice. There needs to be a concerted effort from absolutely everybody. It's not something that only governments can do on a policy level. It's not only something individuals can do on their own. I think there really needs to be a really, really broad scaled undertaking. And I think people need to stop passing the buck and realize it starts with them and individuals putting their own comfort aside for a second and understanding that they're part of something bigger. A lot of people say, what I do doesn't make a difference. I'm just one person, but if we all collectively do our part, then we can address the issue successfully. The end user, of course, has um, a role in this equation. The question is that, do you really need 300 square meter house for a family of four? Again, it's, it's what I put in the word sustainability. It's about to be conscious about the current and future challenges. Just think twice, be informed and take your decision. Don't fall for the fashion or what the neighbors got or what your cousins got. Just rethink the way you want to live according to these challenges.